हेलो हाय एवरीवन आई एम संजय गुप्ता आई वेलकम यू ऑन संजय गुप्ता टेक स्कूल सो टुडे इज डे थर्टी नाइन एंड लास्ट सेशन ऑफ दिस वीक एंड इन टुडे सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ लूप्स दैट वी कैन यूज एन एपिक्स प्रोग्रामिंग सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल Uh, we'll be discussing about for loop then while loop then for each so whatever loops are available and how they works with different examples so we'll be going to discuss them okay so once again welcome everybody so i'm just waiting for couple of more minutes so that uh, folks can join and then we'll be starting so till the time i'm just going to show you some of the slides so if you are joining this session for the first time so uh, with this slide you will be able to know about me then we are following all the best practices i hope everybody is following so if you are new to salesforce ecosystem and you want to uh, make a career in salesforce ecosystem so you can just go through with all these best practices so so i i just say like uh, do daily practice right so consistency is the key and uh, this is the last session of this week so you will be having friday saturday and sunday time before the next session because next week we will be having some complex topics those are very important to understand so prior to that you just need to complete all the exercises right so consistency is the key so you just need to follow that because without being consistent you won't be able to become successful whatever you do right so this boot camp is totally free of cost so just utilize it and uh, learn as much as you can okay so initially i will be explaining the topic and will give you lots of demonstrations today and then we'll take all the questions and answers right and if you have not followed uh, like telegram group so just uh, follow that so that you can discuss the doubts there as well so today week 10 will be completed so like you can see how consistently week by week i was able to complete 10 weeks so if you will be consistent enough so uh, i think total 20 25 weeks will be there and uh, uh, all the topics will be covered with the help of this boot camp right so i i will um, just say you be consistent and if you are doing consistent practice so i really appreciate your efforts so if you have not followed on youtube linkedin instagram or telegram just do follow so that you receive all the notification and uh, share with others as well and uh, i would request to share some reviews because from this week and last week i am not receiving your reviews or feedback so it is a humble request those who are joining the sessions receive or those who are just watching the recording so please do share reviews and feedback in the comment section of this youtube video so that uh, i can know how you are experiencing this boot camp and if you have any suggestions then please let me know so that i can improvise okay so as in yesterday's session i told you like today i will be first covering conditional operator and then we'll uh, focus on the loop so we have a conditional operator which is also known as ternary operator so it is similar to if else condition right so here is the syntax that you can see here we have total three expressions expression 1 then question mark then expression 2 then colon then expression 3 right so here you can see all the explanation is written so expression 1 is basically known as condition expression 2 is basically known as true part and expression 3 is known as false part right so i am going to implement an example for you 
so yesterday we saw some examples related to if else so i am just going to open yesterday's apex file and uh, here we used lots of example so what i am going to do i am going to explain you a simple example of conditional operator so here you can see we have this code right now if you want to implement this code with the help of conditional operator so how you will be doing that so first of all you need to apply a condition so i am writing num1 greater than num2 so this first part is basically an expression so num1 greater than num2 is basically an expression here now after this question mark i just need to write true part so i'm just copying and pasting it and here i need to write colon and then i just need to provide the false case okay so this way you can see this conditional operator is implemented so first we have this condition then we have true part and after that we have false part right now i am just commenting this block okay so if you pass two values into this num1 and num2 so uh, those two values will be compared with the help of this conditional operator okay so i am just saving it and i am going to call this max method so that we can see whether it will be working fine or not so i can see it is showing an error message so let me just see expression cannot be a statement okay so what we can do i am just creating one integer result and actually we cannot write it like this so i am just changing it removing these statements and uh, here i am writing num1 then colon i am writing num2 and through system dot debug i am going to display value of result so maximum equals to and here i am going to show result let's see it saves or not yes okay so just forget what i explained earlier and focus on this so you cannot use system dot debug directly uh, in true and false block so what we did here this is the condition num1 greater than num2 is the condition so if this condition is true so this num1 value will be assigned into this result variable and if it is false so num2 value will be assigned into this result variable and then we are going to display the value which is available in the result so this way you can implement conditional operator right so you have both the options if you want to use if else condition you can go with that and if you want to implement conditional statement so you can go with that as well okay now i just saved this code i am going to run it so i am just going to copy the name of class and method name is max so if i take you there so our method name is max that we need to execute right so this method name is max and here i need to pass two values so i am passing 20 and 40 right now i am going to execute it so that we can see the results so here you can see maximum equals to 40 so it is working fine with the help of conditional operator so this way you can just practice it and uh, generally we don't prefer conditional operator but if you have the requirement like you don't want to use if else because it is having lots of statement so you can just summarize it basis on conditional statement okay now moving to next part that is loop statements right so i will be explaining you three types of loops that we can implement in uh, apex so in which first is for loop right so i am just going to explain everything from the beginning so if you are a beginner and you don't know how to uh, implement a loop 
how it actually executes so you will be able to understand today so here is the syntax so syntax basically means how to write particular feature if you don't know about the, uh, if you don't know the meaning of syntax or so syntax means how to implement a particular feature how to write it so here you can see first of all we need to write for then we have parenthesis then we have initialization then semicolon then termination condition then again semicolon then increment or decrement right so what happens here so first of all you need to provide initialization as a value beginning value then conditions will be checked if condition is true then the statements which you will be writing will be executed once these statements are executed then control will go to increment or decrement right so increment and decrement will be done and basis on that again condition will be tested if condition is true then statements will be evaluated and this cycle happens uh, until your condition is false right so here is the example so this is a simple example here i equals to 1 is basically initialization initialization means the beginning value so here we are declaring a variable named as i variable name can be anything so right now i just used i of integer right i just use i of integer so i is starting from 1 condition is i less than equals to 10 so if i is less than equals to 10 then loop will iterate otherwise it will be terminated and i plus plus means i will be incremented by 1 every time okay so what will happen first of all i will be equals to 1 then i less than equals to 10 this condition will be tested so if condition is true then system dot debug will display the value of i then i plus plus will perform so i will become 2 and then again condition will be tested so always remember this initialization will be done only once after that condition statements and increment decrement always works right so the same example i am going to implement here so that you can understand so i am going to create a class naming it as loop demo and in this class i will be implementing all the examples so public static void for demo so here i am going to implement a loop so integer i equals to 1 i less than equals to 10 and i plus plus then here i am writing system dot debug i right so this is our loop it will repeat 10 times so i just told you this is initialization which will happen once and then this condition will be tested if it is true then system dot debug will be executed then i plus plus and then uh, i will become 2 and then again control will come to this right so now if i want to execute it so i am just saving this code so class name is loop demo and here i am writing for demo and uh, i just clicked on execute so that i can see the debug so here you can see in different lines results are available so in previous session in few sessions you asked me like how we can display the result in different lines so if you have a collection maybe list set map and you want to show the results in different lines right so this is the way you can just implement a loop and through that loop you will be able to display the results in different lines right so i will i will show you that today when we will be discussing about s object so i hope with this simple example you understood how loop works okay so basically what is happening this system dot debug statement is executing 10 times so the purpose of implementation of loop is if you want to repeat one or more than one statements more than one time 
सो इंस्टेड ऑफ राइटिंग दैम अगेन एंड अगेन यू कैन राइट दैम इन साइड अ लूप राइट सो दिस इज द बेसिक पर्पज ऑफ इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ लूप राइट सो डोंट राइट स्टेटमेंट्स अगेन एंड अगेन जस्ट इंप्लीमेंट अ लूप सो दैट दे विल बी एग्जीक्यूटेड ऑटोमेटिकली राइट सो नाउ वॉट आई एम गोइंग टू डू आई एम गोइंग टू इंप्लीमेंट वन मोर एग्जाम्पल फॉर यू सो नेक्स्ट एग्जाम्पल इज वी नीड टू प्रिंट टेबल ऑफ अ नंबर राइट सो यूजर विल बी प्रोवाइडिंग अ नंबर एंड ऑन दैट नंबर वील बी अप्लाइंग अ लूप राइट एंड वील बी डिस्प्लेइंग द रिजल्ट राइट सो समन इज आस्किंग कैन वी इनिशलाइज स्ट्रिंग सो वी कैन नॉट बिकॉज ऑन स्ट्रिंग यू वॉन्ट बी एबल टू अप्लाई प्रॉपर कंडीशन सो जनरली इफ यू वॉन्ट टू इम्प्लीमेंट अ लूप सो वी प्रिफर इन टीजर न्यूमरिक वैल्यूज सो दैट वी कैन इंक्रीमेंट और डिक्रीमेंट दोज वैल्यूज सो नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू क्रिएट अ मैथड नेम्ड एज टेबल एंड दिस मैथड विल बी रिसीविंग अ वैल्यू राइट सो so here i am going to receive a value from user so that value will be stored under n right and uh, here what i am going to do so i i will be implementing a loop so basically if you want to print table of a number if you want to print table of a number so what we need to do table basically contains 10 digits right table basically contains 10 digits so so if if you want to print a table of a number so loop will be repeating 10 times right so here what i'm going to do so here i just started loop from 1 and it will be repeating till 10 okay so here this is the condition so what i am doing here i am multiplying n with i so n is the number for which we need to display the table and uh, these are the values like i will be uh, having different values and basis on that uh, it will be displaying the result okay so uh, guys i am just coming back in 2 minutes hold on okay so sorry guys uh, there was some issue and uh, i am just back so i was just explaining this example to you so basically here in this example uh, we are receiving a number from user into this n variable and uh, uh, this loop will be repeating 10 times because if you want to display any table so table basically contains 10 digits 
right so loop is starting from 1 and it will go up to 10 and here uh, every time the number will be multiplied with i right so initially i will be 1 so whatever number is number will be multiplied with 1 then next time i will be incremented by 1 so it will become 2 so our number will be multiplied with 2 right so this way the results will be available so i am going to just execute this so that you can understand the result so i am just entering 5 here okay so this table uh, function will be receiving 5 as input so this 5 will go to n and uh, basis on that result will be available so here you can see the results it is showing 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 40, 40, 40 and 50 so 10 times results are available so what happened here i am just explaining the process again so i is initially 1 then condition is true i less than equals to 10 then we have system dot debug so here you just need to see we passed n as 5 so what will happen first time it will be multiplied like this 5 into 1 because n is 5 and i is 1 so initially it will be 5 into 1 so the result will be displayed then i will be incremented so next time the value of i will become 2 okay so 2 is less than equals to 10 so now what you need to do here it will be calculating like 5 into 2 so n will remain same throughout the loop but i will be incremented by 1 every time and this process will execute total 10 times okay so this way basically it is working now we have next example like how to print even or odd numbers up to n so i am going to show that example to you so i am implementing it here so that you can see it properly so first i am going to show you how we can display all the even numbers up to n so n will be a number it can be 20 30 50 any any number so from the beginning like from let's say 1 One to that n number, whatever even values are available, we need to display them. Okay, so here what I can do, I can just implement a loop. Integer i equals to one, i less than equals to n, i plus plus. Then if so i am just going to use math function mod that we used yesterday so here i am going to use i then 2 if i is completely divisible by 2 so the remainder will be 0 and here i am going to write system dot debug i so if i is divisible by 2 then only value of i will be displayed so this way inside for loop you can implement if condition as well okay so i hope this way uh, this example you understood and uh, someone is asking to display the result in table format okay so for that what we can do so you want 5 into 1 equals to 5 so n then you need to write plus then multiplication sign then again plus then i then plus then equals to then plus so this way you will be able to see the result right if you write it like this n will be displaying the value then plus multiply will display as is then i will display its value then equals to will be displayed as is then n into i so this way with this single statement you will be able to display table in table format so i am saving this code so first i am going to show you table format again so this is the result you can see now result is in table format
<coughs> okay and if i want to run this even number so here i am passing even num and 50 and executing it so you will see all the even numbers in the result So here you can see starting from 2 till 50 all the even numbers are displayed and all are displaying through line number 11. And if you want to see the odd number so you can just copy paste, change the method number, method name odd num and here you can write not equals to 0. Instead of double equals to I am using not equals to. right? and uh, I am just saving it and I can see uh, people are asking questions so just ask your question after the explanation I will take your questions so here I am just using odd num and I am executing it so now you will see results as odd numbers okay so this way I hope you are able to understand how we can implement different type of loops in Apex. And I just want to explain one more example then I will focus on the chat so that I can answer a few questions. So next example is print sum of natural numbers. Okay, so I am going to implement this as well. So here method name is sum of natural numbers and uh, n will be receiving the and limit. So let's say if you are entering 25 into n. So 1 to 25 all the digits should be added. So here I am creating integer. So someone is asking uh, can we use this integer outside the loop. So yes we can. So this way you can write it. So now what I can do. I can write it i equals to 1, i less than equals to n, then i plus plus. And inside the loop you will be writing sum equals to sum plus i. And after completion of loop you will be showing the sum. Right. So I think this is very clear and easy to understand. We cannot write system dot debug inside the loop because if you want to add more than one numbers. So inside loop first they will be added and once all the numbers are added then only one sum you want to display. Right. So for that case what you need to do you need to write your system dot debug outside the loop. Okay, so if you if you write uh, your system dot debug outside the loop, so it will execute once, and uh, this statement will be executed again and again. So initially sum is zero, and uh, whatever value of i is, it will be added into sum. So sum will be containing all the submission, and once this loop is completed, so result of sum will be displayed. Okay, so I think there is no more questions. Uh, all the questions are already answered. And I think this is very easy to understand as well. Now I am just moving to next example which is related to while loop. So just focus on this syntax. So here uh, in this syntax you can see we have initialization. Then we have while condition then statements increment decrement. So the process is same the way of writing this loop is different right syntax is different but the overall process is same so initialization we need to do one time then with while we need to write the condition then statement will be evaluated and then increment or decrement whatever you want to do you can just write so this is the example so integer i equals to 1 then while i less than 10 or less than equals to 10 whatever you want to write 
then system dot debug will display the value of i and then i plus plus okay so this way the same for loop you can implement with the while loop as well so there are two variations available uh, it depends on you which type you want to use right okay so uh, we have these examples like print table of number print sum of natural number so i am just going to show you how we can implement them using while loop as well so i'm just copying it pasting it here table with while and uh, i'm going to convert it into while loop so this way if you write your loop so it will become while okay so overall process is same first i will be starting with 1 then this condition will be tested uh, i less than equals to 10 if it is true then system dot debug will be doing this calculation and then i plus plus will increment value of i with 1 so the same results will be displayed so if you want i can just run it so we can see the table of 50 so whatever number you will be passing its table will be displayed like this okay so i hope uh, this is also easy now let me take couple of question okay narendra is appreciating my effort thank you this motivates me and uh, uh, the, like your feedback and motivation or uh, your positive words is medicine for me because i am doing it uh, continuously from last two months so thank you for appreciating the efforts uh, praveen is asking in last example can we have to use this dot sum in loop we have already no uh, we we don't you we won't be able to use this dot sum if you declare the variable here outside the method then you can write this dot sum right now your variable is inside the method so it is local for this method only that's why you cannot use uh, this dot sum okay so i hope your question is answered right praveen uh so i just explained for loop i just explained while loop now next and very important loop that you need to understand and uh, in trigger in each trigger scenario we will be using this loop right so this loop is very much important to understand okay so i am going to explain it so listen it carefully if you are watching live then uh, you can just ask the questions and uh, if you are watching the recording so uh, you can ask questions in the comment section or you can just ask questions in the telegram group as well so this loop is very much important so just understand the syntax here at right hand side you can see we need to use the collection variable so always remember this loop for each loop you can use with collection variable only so if you have list set or map then only this loop will be useful right so here you will be having the list set or map means collection one by one the values will be available into this variable okay and whatever type of collection you are using same collection type as data type you need to use it for this variable okay and whatever statements you want to execute you can write so no initialization no condition no increment decrement everything will be managed automatically with this first line okay here is the example simple example so acc list is the list collection variable one by one each account record will go to this acc variable so this acc is a variable at one time it can store one account information and this account is the data type for this acc 
then inside this loop we are using system dot debug and here we are showing the ACC account information. Okay, so in initial sessions, people asked me how we can display IDs or account information in different different lines. So this is the way you can display those results into different lines. Okay, so I'm going to show you before that just focus on this slide. So now the examples which I'm going to show you will be using everything together. So you will see S object like account, contact or other custom objects. You will see list, set, map, if else, loop. Whatever we have learned so far in Apex, everything I will be combining and will give you examples. Right? So now I'm jumping to these examples and you can see uh, this last line is also important. We need to apply null check that we understood yesterday. Okay, so I will be covering everything together. So I am going example by example. So first example is iterate on account list and display account information. Okay, so requirement says you need to iterate on account list. So before applying iteration, we need to create account list as well. And to create account list, we need to fetch the data which is available under, uh, under account object. So I'm going to show you everything. Okay, so I'm creating a method public static void. Naming it as show list. Then here I am creating list of account ACC list, then new list of account. So here you can see I just created a variable of type S object. So account is S object that I'm using here. I'm using list as a collection. So I hope everybody knows about this if you are following all the sessions. Then we need to query some data from org. So what we can do, we can write ACC list equals to select ID name from account and here I'm writing limit as five. Okay. so. Remember carefully, right now we have not discussed about SOQL in detail. So there is another session planned for SOQL. So you can see next week, Monday, we'll be discussing SOQL in detail. Right? So there are lots of examples available. So I will be modifying this sheet as well. Uh, or maybe it, it, it can take two sessions also because we have variety of uh, variations in SOQL. So I will try to explain each and every example to you, right? So just understand this simple SOQL, which says I need to query five account records along with their ID and name. Okay. That's it. And all those five account records will be stored in this ACC list. Now I need to implement a loop so that one by one, I can show the details. But before implementing loop, I need to know whether this ACC list is null or not. Right? It means it can happen. Account object is having no record. There is no record available under account. So what will happen? ACC list will be having null. So before implementing loop, what we need to do, we need to apply a null check. So here I'm writing if ACC list dot size greater than zero. So this is the one way. This is the one way to check list for null. If its size is greater than zero, then you can implement a loop. Okay. I will show you another way as well. But before that, I'm going to implement the loop. So this is our for each loop. So this is account list. Through this account list, one by one account record will be available into this ACC and it is the type. So ACC and ACC list both will be of same data type. Okay, but it is a collection and it is a single variable. That is the difference. Now here I am writing system dot debug. So I will be showing ID and name both. So I am writing ACC dot ID.
then hyphen then plus acc dot name so this is the iteration okay so here null check is applied and the loop is implemented and result will be displayed so this is the one way of applying null another way is this so you can use is empty method and here you need to apply not this i explained yesterday as well so account list is empty if it is empty it will be true but if it is empty then we don't want to execute this loop so i just applied not it will convert true into false and if is empty is false means list is having some data so then we are applying not so that that false can become true and this loop will be executed okay so i'm making it comment so that only first uh, block will be executed now i'm going to save and execute it so you will see the results will be available in different lines here you can see so id then hyphen then account name id hyphen account name so all the account information is available in different lines so this way you can just show the data which is available in single line you can just break and show them in different lines with the help of loop okay so this way i hope you understood how we can apply loop on list along with null check yes praveen we can use soql here in place of list so this i will be covering in the next session when we will be understanding soql in a proper form right so i don't want to make it complex because my focus is to explain how loop works okay so that I, i will be covering in the next session for sure so next we have iterate on account list and create a set of account ids so i think this we already understood in previous sessions but again i am going to show you so i am creating a set of id and uh, here along with displaying the result i am going to add account ids into this set okay so this way i am able to add account ids into set then we have another requirement iterate on set of account ids and display all the ids okay so i am going to explain you requirement number 3 iterate on set of account ids and display all the ids so in the same method i am going to do this operation now what i am going to do i am going to first apply null check for this acc ids i am checking through is empty and here i am writing not so this is null check for set so here i am writing the comments now so this is iteration on account list to display data and uh, create set of account ids right now here we are implementing a loop which will display account ids through set so here i am going to write for id acc id and then acc ids so see it carefully why i used id data type here because this acc ids set is of type id okay so set is of type id that's why i used id data type here then acc id is just a variable and this acc ids is a basically set and now here i can just write system dot debug acc id so this loop will be displaying only ids of the account okay so here we have two things now 
this loop will display id and name through list and uh, this loop will display only ids through set so i hope with this example you are able to understand how we can iterate on list how we can iterate on set later i will be showing you how you can iterate on map as well so i just saved it i am going to execute it now you will see two different results so here line number 12 is showing list data through list and line number 20 is showing data through set only ids okay so this way i hope you are able to understand this now we have another requirement iterate on account list and create a map of account ids and account okay this also i think we understood earlier as well so i am going to add this here so i am creating account map okay and here inside this loop i am going to fill that map so for map we need to use put method and uh, we need to add key so keys will be ids and uh, values will be account so this way we can add okay so i am just modifying it create set and map so iteration on account list to display data and create set and map so here set is created here map is created so i'm just writing the comments uh set is having data map is having data okay this is another loop for set only now if i go further so i have two more requirements iterate on map created above using keys so in map we have two things keys and values so if you want to iterate on map so you need to decide you want to iterate basis on keys or basis on values right so i am going to do both for you so iterate map based on keys so again i am applying if condition so that i can check map for null so not acc map dot is empty right if map is not empty then we can apply a loop so first we are applying loop basis on keys now we need to check the data type of key so keys data type is basically map of id id is the key data type so here what i need to do i need to write id acc id and here i am writing acc map dot key set so if you remember the method key set key set is the method where if you apply this method so it will give you all the keys so automatically all the keys will be retrieved and one by one those keys will go to this acc id variable and now here you can write system dot debug acc id so this way you can iterate a map basis on the keys right now we have next requirement we need to iterate on map uh, created above using its values now map is having values as account so i am going to show you that as well so now what we are going to do we are going to iterate map based on values so if so condition will be same if acc map dot is empty so if it is not null so here i am applying not so if map is not null so we can apply a for loop so this time data type will be account acc then acc map dot values so if you want to fetch all the values through map so you need to use this values method that we already discussed in map session so here i am going to write system dot debug and i am just going to show acc so acc will be showing account id and name together so this way i hope you understood how we can iterate on map 
and uh, later on like whatever logic you want to apply inside this loop that depends on the uh, real time scenario okay so now i am going to show you this one by one so i am going to have a uh, few system dot debugs so display data through list so that we can identify so here display data through set then here display data through map keys and here display data through map values okay so all the different loops are implemented here now if i save it and execute it so you will see different results so first of all you can see display data through list so you have five results line number 14 then line number 21 says display data through set then we have five ids then display data through map keys and display data through map values so all the results are displayed here in separate lines okay so this way i hope you understood everything clearly like how we can use different collections how we can apply null check through conditional statements how we can implement loops on list set and map right so uh this is it for today's session this is all i prepared for today's demo and i hope you enjoyed the session you understood a lot today and uh, whatever your reviews are or whatever your feedbacks are just share on the live chat also uh, on the comment sections if you are watching the recording just uh, share your reviews or feedback in the comment section so that it will give me motivation to do all or uh, sessions in the same way like i am doing and uh, uh, just to uh, tell you next week is very much important because we will be discussing about soql dml so these are the uh, like key concepts of apex if you are master in soql and dml then you can implement your apex code properly right so thank you so much for joining today's session and uh, i can see there is no uh, much questions available right so i think there are no question that i need to answer if you have any question you can ask so that i i can answer if i missed any question you can just ask so that i can answer that otherwise uh, you can just leave and uh, next session will be on next week monday so till then do lots of practice complete all the exercises which are available in the exercise sheet and uh, we'll see more exercises in the next week so aparna we will be using map set list in trigger so basically right now we are learning how we can use apex so while learning trigger we will be actually using apex to solve the problems right so right now we are getting familiar how we can implement different features of apex thank you thank you everybody thank you sashi praveen pranay sunil yeah sunil i will be giving more assignments next week yeah debarshan if you if you see the session tracker so lwc is already mentioned there along with javascript yes satish i will be sharing admin interview question pdf after this session so just just join the telegram group if you have not joined so in the telegram group i will be uh, sharing the pdf so i'm just sharing the link in the chat so that you can follow so this is this is the telegram channel you can just subscribe where everything i am going to share
so uh, shaikh is asking for schedule so schedule is available under this uh, video description so if you go to the description so you will find the session tracker if you don't have so let me just share it with you so i'm just pasting that in the chat so that you can have it amya happy ram navmi thank you navin thank you rajiv sanjit thank you akula sandeep yes bhanu if you see the session tracker everything i will be sharing I, everything i will be teaching these are like asynchronous epic so we will be discussing them as well so ashok sub query will be understanding first in upcoming sessions and then i will uh, tell you how through loop we can show them in different lines thank you sashi thank you sunita thank you mahesh thank you nikhil thank you sekandar happy weekend thank you sunil thank you praveen yes praveen we can have as object in for loop so i will be explaining that in next week thank you revti thank you so grinath you are asking a question which is related to c or c++ programming so i i uh, we can do but i won't be able to show because uh, this is logic based question so uh, you can solve it through c or data structure knowledge okay thank you everybody so i think uh, today's session was awesome and i am happy like you shared all the positive feedbacks and uh, uh, i will do all the remaining sessions with the same enthusiasm thank you so much for joining today's session appreciate your time bye everyone see you next week